So welcome back to Relentless Talk Radio. A little technical difficulty with our um, art and fashion uh, guest, uh, Stephanie. So we're having Justin Hodge from Muscular Moving Men come on a little sooner than later. So our segments are a little out of order today, but Stephanie will be on shortly. So Justin, Muscular Moving Men, you and I are in the same BNI chapter together, which is super cool. We meet on Wednesdays at 9.30, BNI Paragon. I love the new person that you have coming for your – you're so busy right now expanding, aren't you? Right. Thanks, Michelle. I appreciate you having me. Uh, you know, I think just this is the busy time of year in general. It's yeah. statistically they say fifty to sixty percent of the moves that happen in this country happen in May and June. So really, it's been yeah. It's it's the busy time. Kids get out of school. You know, yeah. people get their turns, and I think that's when they really want to uproot their families and do the full on big move. Well, it makes sense too because it's not too hot yet, and it's not cold. It's not snowing, right? Yeah, I think obviously it's just kind of the perfect storm. I mean, in general, as far as Phoenix goes, there's no great time. The hotter it gets, the less likely people are going to be to do their own move. So it works great for us. We just have to convince a bunch of guys that it's a good idea for them to move furniture when it's 120 degrees. Right, which is which is part of the problem, right? So so why do you do what you do? I mean, you you and your partner, uh, whose name is escaping you right now, your partner, your Josh. co-partner's name... Josh, why? I mean, you guys started your company super young, like pretty much out of college, right? Or were you in college? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, it was 2008. So I had graduated from college in 2006 and I worked for a moving company when I was in school and just kind of learned the business. I mean, moving is a bunch of different things. It's, there's business moving, residential, local, long distance. So we really just learned one part of it that we honed in on, which is local residential moving. So learn how to charge for the service, you know, what goes along with it. And, and as time went on, just kind of figured that there would be an opportunity for us to do our own thing. So we borrowed a parent's truck and trailer and started doing moves for people after hours. So he had an insurance day job. I was doing my normal moving job and going to school. And we would go and move people off of Craigslist. And you may or may not get paid at the end of the, of the gig. So it was a strange time. There was some shady people that you're dealing with. You know, we're in the middle of the Great Recession, so the economy's not great. But what you found is that I think it's really a recession-proof business. People are just always going to want to hire a company to do their move. So, you know, one thing led to another. We bought a moving truck and eventually started hiring some more employees. We were able to pull ourselves off the trucks. And it, it definitely was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. We had multiple different times where we were vandalized. So we, we parked our trucks on the corner of... Uh, Oh, shoot. We, sorry, I lost it there for a minute. Okay. We, we parked our trucks at the corner of Cactus and Cave Creek Road, and there was no parking. It just was a totally open area. So multiple times we had some kind of competitor or person we don't know came and popped all the tires, smashed the windshield. Wow. Trucks uh, completely vandalized and wiped out the fleet. So showing up first thing in the morning is a pretty sobering moment when you have to not only uh, not do moves for all your customers that day, but pay to fix all the damage. And it actually happened on wow. two different occasions. So we learned pretty quickly that, you know, the world doesn't care what you're, you're trying to accomplish. You only, you don't get what you want. You get what you deserve, I, I guess, to a certain extent. And so right. we decided to put some temporary rental fencing around the trucks. And what we found is that we still got vandalized again. So we actually hired an attack dog service. So literally a guy <laughs> shows up in a bite suit in a van, he parks there, and I said, "I got to see this. I can't wait to see what this looks like." So, we get we can hide behind the car and watch this guy literally in a suit put two of the meanest looking dogs you've ever seen inside the cage where our trucks are parked, and right. like nobody will ever mess with our trucks again. And sure enough, I'm just watching the dogs, and this guy happened to be riding his bike past, and the dog got like up on the fence, and the, the fence like bowed out, and the guy almost rode off the road on his bicycle. So he said, this is, we're finally secure. And from that point on, we've known that, that you can't park your trucks out in the middle of, the, uh, of nowhere and just hope that everything's going to be okay. Because you're thinking like, you know, people's stuff's in them. They're not thinking they're empty, right? They're, they're just thinking there's stuff in there, right? There's a, I mean, there's, it, it, it definitely, you know, costs money to, you know, equip a truck, buy the truck. You know, now we have about 25 power units at our fleet here in Phoenix. So there's, trucks tractors trailers there's you know thousands of moving pads there's 800 storage vaults there's i mean it, it's 
it costs a lot to continue to get the operation going and and it just you kind of continue to feed the beast we have about forty thousand feet now of space up near cave creek road in the 101 and storage has just become bigger and bigger for us so you know we have give or take a million pounds of furniture that we're storing at any given time and that's really been great for us because when you do moving, it doesn't always end well for a customer because they have to do storage because they have gaps mm-hmm. in closing. So that's not much fun for them. But what it equates to us is that there's two different moves and there's an ongoing reoccurring service that they pay for on the first of the month. So, you know, storage has definitely been a big addition for us. And I love how you guys have organized your space and been in your space is genius. I mean, you've got like pods on, on top of each other. It's super smart use of the space. No, thanks. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely something that, you know, is necessary and vital to continue being competitive with the other moving companies that are out there. So there's a couple that offer that service and it's been good for us. In addition to that, we started doing a lot of commercial moving. So basically anything that's not residential. So when we came out of the gate in 2019. We actually got a partnership with the uh, since terminated Alliance of American Football League. So there was the AAF League, which started. They had eight different teams in eight different yeah. cities. You know, we actually got the opportunity to do the move from San Antonio, Texas, to the eight different cities where they played. And we did the ongoing service to and from airports and hotels, server moves, goalpost moves, all this kind of stuff. So just in a three month span, we completely eclipsed what our goal was to do in commercial moving for all of 2019 just with that one partnership. So that was a huge opportunity for us to get started in office moving. And, you know, we've, we've made a pretty, pretty good dent in the market so far this year. And that's something that's really a big focus for us. And you're expanding, right? Like I was, I was joking with you earlier, you're actually expanding to tell me where. So we have a location in, in Denver now as well. Right. What we've started to figure out is that it, it, it is kind of a slower burn when you do the advancement across the country, just because you can really get, you know, the cart before the horse, if you're not focusing on what's important to us, which is our six pack of core values. So mm-hmm. quality, financial efficiency, respect, advancement, culture, and customer experience. So Michelle, that's our six pack of core values, like on your stomach, not like the kind that you actually, yeah. so, that's what's it's, 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 it's actually on your wall, right? But right by your, the, in front of your gym, like your, your employees can actually work out at Although I can imagine, like, if they're moving furniture all day, the last thing they want to do is work out. When You'd they get be surprised, them. Michelle. It's funny because we, you know, that is, it, it, you talk to other movers and they come into your space. They go, well, why do you have a gym here? Don't you realize that this is probably $2,500 a month in billable space where you can put more storage containers? Well, why, why would you do that? But for us, what we believe in and the things that are important to us and how much we want to take care of our guys and, and the, right. the image that we have and what we want to be is di- you know, radically different from anybody else in the industry. So we have a bunch of gym equipment, a, a bunch of space that we've dedicated to that. And the guys literally will show up an hour before their shift. They'll come in there and work out because it's basically like having a gym membership. So they have key card access and they can come in and work out. They'll stay after their shifts. And it's, it's definitely a bonding thing too. So we like to work out with the guys and we get a chance to get to know them. And it, it, it just, it makes everything better. Well, you moved me from Cave Creek to Phoenix, and I have to say that your guys were awesome. They were friendly. They were pleasant. They were funny. You know, they, they took a break and had lunch. They were right back down at my place. They, they helped move everything in. They, they packed some things a little more carefully than even I wanted them to. I had a couple of things. Where I, was just, I don't care if they get broken. Just see, they're, they're kind of like art-related work stuff, and they put them in boxes, and I was surprised. So um, I really appreciate you moving me. You did a fantastic job. I refer you to everybody I know. And, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, how you run the company and the, your values, it, it shows in how your employees behave. And they didn't know who I was. You know, they didn't know that that anything other than the fact that I was a customer and that, that they just took care of me like everybody else. So I really appreciated the attention and the uh, and the professionalism. So thank you for, for moving me to my new uh, abode here in downtown Phoenix. You know, I had a, I came from Cave Creek, which was like, you know, a, a, a house in, a, in kind of, you know, a little house, a prairie kind of house to a, an apartment building in, in, um, in Central Phoenix. So it was a different experience. And they really were very cool. So thank you very much for moving me. Of course. So how can, people, how can people find you? Yeah, so the website's probably easiest. It's muscularmovingmen.com. So they can go on there and get our contact information and submit a 
uh, a quote request. We'll either talk to them over the phone, do a virtual survey, or do an in-person in-home estimate. Or they can call us at uh, 877-4-FIT-MOVE. Pretty easy to remember there. Or just send us an email to info at muscularmovingmen.com. I love your name too, by the way. I mean, it's just so smart. I see your trucks from a mile away. I think the name is is fun and memorable and super smart. So I look I forward to seeing you back at BNI at some point just to visit. And uh, I'm wishing you the best. You know, I was looking at your your Facebook profile and I was picking out a picture, right? So I'm going through your profile and you were married to a gorgeous woman and you've got two, uh, two or three. We got two kids, yeah. Two amazing children. And your profile picture is like one family shot after another. And I have to say, not only are you an amazing businessman, but I can tell from your photographs and from knowing you personally, you're an amazing husband and an incredible father. And that's- oh, Thanks for saying that. Yeah, I definitely scored pretty pretty high. I think I, I, uh, I haven't, con you know, she, she's, you know, hasn't been made aware yet that she's probably too good for me. No, we- <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have a lot of fun. She's great. I'm, I'm definitely really lucky. Got two great kids, Hayden and Hudson. They're 10 and 7. So they're going to be tall. I'm, you know, it's, yeah. it's it's a little frightening to think about. I'm 6'6". Six, six. My wife is 6 feet tall. So I'm just hoping that for, for her sake, my daughter doesn't, you know, end up being taller than me. So somewhere between 6 and 6'6". Six, six, and we can just take it to <laughs> volleyball and swimming and all that kind of stuff. That's amazing. I didn't realize she was six feet tall. Wow. I mean, like, I guess when I look at the pictures, it looks like normal sized people, but now I remember how, how tall you are. So that's amazing. We're circus people, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was really awesome talking with you. We'll talk again and have a good rest of your day. Thanks for being on Relentless Talk Radio. Thanks, Michelle. Take care. All right.